Praise the Lord and good afternoon. It's 539 and my name is Mother Gail Trader. This is just in case. If you haven't read the word, if you haven't focused on the Lord or basked in the sunlight of his love through his word, I'm here to assist you. This is Wednesday. It is July 25th, 2018. And this is the day the Lord hath made. It's a beautiful day here in Chattanooga. Sun shining. Uh, rain is not in our forecast until next week. It is warm and a delightful sunny afternoon. I'm dressed in my uh, glad rags because I'm going to go out there and paint and wash stuff. And uh, I enjoy fixing things. Um, as you know, I'm a creator. I create a little bit too much, but I enjoy what I do. It's part of the piddling package. Something you do when you get in your 60s. Well, praise the Lord this afternoon. Once again, I'm Mother Gail Trailer with Just In Case. The uh, program was originally created just to inform my children, whom I love dearly, who are grown and on their own with their own children. Mama wants you to look at Christ. Mama wants you to stay focused on Jesus. Take a little time out of your busy day and listen to mother one more time. They may uh, start to listen after I'm gone, but I sure I'm going to have a lot of material for them to uh, look back on. If, if the Lord tarries and and Mark Zuckerberg does not take Facebook off the planet or something else of that sort. Well, we went to noonday prayer and we enjoyed um, Pastor Adams as he disclosed uh, our noonday topic this uh, for the next several weeks um, false beliefs there are quite a few of them on the horizon and uh, our young people need to uh, be told about false beliefs when you go away to college when you go into the military you're going to hear a lot of prophecies, a lot of religions that will come on, you know, on the surface of your life and they'll, you know, we aren't to argue with them. We aren't to argue with them. We are to know in whom we have our faith. And that's very, very, very important. Back in our day, we were told that uh, Jesus was the way. Jesus was the truth. He was the light. And these other religions, you didn't hear too much about Mormons. You, you saw and you heard about Jehovah's Witness, but they were not as prevalent. Every now and then they would change their doctrine anyway. And they actually... Uh, to me, they had no uh, standing. There was nothing solid on which they seemed to, you know, grab hold of that anyone else would want to grab hold of. Uh, their, their religions changed. Then there was the Muslims. They came upon uh, the scene and they were dressed in their, uh, with their uh, clean cut hairdos and their spick and span suits and they, their newspapers and their uh, bean pies. 
and that was great. And that's something that made your eyebrow go up. But uh, Allah and the Quran was a little bit much to swallow. After the Bible, I couldn't see myself studying. You know, after you've been exposed and opened up to the Word of God, eh -eh. Uh, what's his name, uh, Muhammad? I please. He had no, no comparison to Jesus Christ when I was younger. This is what I was told and, and from what I had been brought up on. Muslims. Now, black Hebrews, they were really unknown. This is something new. And recently I, I talked to my son, I think it was last year, and we had a little talk about the uh, black Hebrews. I think he was studying that. I've had children that would uh, question the upbringings. Maybe you do too. They they get older and they say, "Well, gee, I think I'll do this. I'll believe in that. Maybe I get through with this and this and that and this." But you know what? Jesus is the way. And. Um, He's just the way. He's the truth and he's the light. And no one comes to the Father except through Jesus. And we remember that and we held on to that. And when, you know, trouble came, trouble uh, threatened to, to destroy us, we called on the name of Jesus. And that was that. We knew nothing about Allah. We weren't given that choice. Uh, parents who are raising children today are raising them without knowledge of the, the way. They don't know the truth. Uh, I wouldn't take the chance. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Well, anyway, um, before I get too personal and start talking about things I shouldn't talk about, instead of leaving it in the hands of God, because I know I have children who I have um, raised in the church, maybe you do too, and they think that they can live without Christ. They can uh, believe in some strange deities. And uh, I know my youngest has expressed interest in the black Hebrews. And now I understand what he was talking about. I couldn't understand them before. If you come at me with something other than Christ and him crucified, I don't understand you. I'll listen to you, but I don't understand. I didn't know that the black Hebrews have 613 laws. Now, my, my son was asking me, how do you keep the laws? 613? To tell you the truth, I could barely keep 10. 613? Be real. Be real. Come on. Thank God I don't have to keep the law to get close to Christ, to get through to God. Jesus came to abolish that. And whom the Son who has set free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Excuse me. Perfect Imperfection by Monica Brands. Lord, she writes at the end, help us to humbly rely on you. It's not through our own righteousness. Nothing good can get me to, 
to Jesus, I mean to God, except through his son. There is no other way. No other way. Perfect imperfection. She talks about a college professor who uh, found out that she was a procrastinator. And uh, he told her, gave her some word of advice. She procrastinated because she wanted to do everything perfect. So she would put it off. Are you like that? You want to do it right so you don't do it at all. How does that work? Does it work good for you? Because it don't work for me. It makes me angry. Uh, when I look around and I see so much to do and I don't do nothing, that makes me hmm, sad because days are precious. Time is, is, is fleeting. Before you know it, the day is over. Her, uh, her college professor told her, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. You want to do something good? Don't put it off. Cause you, I mean, you want to do something, but you want to do it perfect. So you don't do nothing at all perfect, the enemy of good. You won't uh, grow unless you take risks. You don't grow in this word unless you share it with someone. If I wait till I am hmm, perfect, I won't share this word with anyone. I don't know all these scriptures. I don't know. Uh, I don't know all the laws. I don't know uh, all the, the the where to find this or where to find that in the word. But I do know that Jesus died for me, and by my faith in Him. I'm saved. I know that he delivered me. I know that he's working on the inside to perfect me. I know he sees a good work and he sees that something is something worth. He sees something worth him dying for. He died because there's something about us that he loves and, and, and he, he, we're a workmanship of his. Let's read what Paul says. Um, Paul learned the hard way. He strove to become perfect in God's laws. He was a Pharisee. He was, uh, uh, you know, trying to, he was a Jew, he, uh, he studied, he, he kept the law, worshiped on the Sabbath. Uh, his family was of the lineage of the Jews. And, and he, he, he went to school uh, at the, and it says in the word that he sat at the feet of Gamaliel. I mean, he studied this law. He knew this word. He knew the uh, scriptures. He knew. And I'm not talking about the Bible. Okay? Uh, the Bible was uh, created years after with the Dead Sea Scrolls and all of that. But um, he realized this, that if his own efforts were enough to be whole and right with God, then there was no need for Christ. God used Paul after the conversion, but he needed to be, his mind needed to be altered. So after he had that vision.
so praise the Lord. Thank you for holding. This is a terrible time to uh, do this, but I'm going to go on and do it anyway. I'm going to uh, continue with the word and, and by God's grace we'll get through this. This is about the fourth or fifth time. Hallelujah. I, I must have uh, something that uh, is getting on the nerves of the enemy. But anyway, our faith in Christ Jesus, through Christ Jesus, perfects us. It fixes us up. Paul realized that after his encounter on that Damascus road. He says not only he was knocked down, but all of the people that he was with were knocked down. I don't know whether he was on a beast or off a beast, but I know he encountered Christ. And Christ got him straight and set him on that road. He saw something wonderful in Paul. And he wanted to use it for the furtherance of the gospel. And that he did. Let's read uh, Ephesians 3, 8 to 19. And if you have a word, the word of God, read along with me. If you don't have the word, just listen. For faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And uh, by the way, I'm reading from the woman's... Um, Bible, the New King James Version of the Bible, and it reads as follows. Aren't you glad that you don't have the weight of perfecting yourself? I mean, honestly. Do you know, I, I, I couldn't even stop biting my nails until I was in my... Uh, 50s. That's one of the things I would have perfected about myself years ago. Nail biting. I couldn't do it. But God. But couldn't stop smoking. But God. Lying, cheating, stealing. But God. And I still have uh, traces of that come back on me. But that doesn't happen to you, huh? Okay. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. I'm still walking, talking, a work in progress. But God. I don't have to do it on my own, but I'm learning. See, because when I sin, the Holy Spirit convicts me. Does that happen to you? Yeah convicts you and you'd rather anything else than that gnawing kind of oh you messed up you need to go, go apologize you need to stop doing what you did you know that little holy that spirit within us thank you jesus for the holy spirit thank you anyway i'm delighted so I'm going to start from uh, Ephesians, the 8th verse, and read down to the 19th. Listen, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. You didn't have anything to do with this salvation. It was God's gift to you. You were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. And don't you forget it. Don't forget it. But by grace and faith in God, the grace of salvation, the mercy that came along with salvation, and your faith in God, faith in God, gave uh, God gave everyone uh, a little bit of faith, you know. And, and we believed and trusted God to save us from what we were and what we had become, what... Uh, living our lives without, in darkness, uh, had made us. Okay? It says, for uh, by grace we were saved, not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. We are created in Christ Jesus. We were created in Christ Jesus. Not when you were born. You were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. But when you ask the Lord to come into your life, you became saved 
and you became a new creature. Behold, all things have become new. And we were created for good works in Christ Jesus, which we couldn't do on our own. We just couldn't. Didn't have the strength, which God prepared before him as beforehand that we should walk in them. He already prepared those works before we even got saved. He prepared works for us to do in Christ Jesus. He knew that we were coming. So he prepared the way. In him we are already perfected. In him. We haven't achieved it yet. But we continue to have faith and to stay focused. And we are perfected and on our way or we are doing those good works which were prepared beforehand. Therefore remember that once you, you were Gentiles, that's non-Jewish people. We weren't Jews, we aren't Jews. And, and we were called uncircumcision. We were the off-scouring. Uh, Deacon Reese called, said that we were considered dogs. And we were. We are nothing. If you weren't a Jew, you were nothing. Okay? But we were called the uncircumcision by uh, what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. People who were Jews called us uncircumcised. We were heathens. We were nothing. And uh, that at that time, you were without Christ. We didn't have Christ. We were dead in our sins and trespasses. We, we were in darkness. And we walked according to the course of this world. You know, the enemy used us because we were, were not born again. We had no God in our lives. We were in darkness. We... we we, we had a tendency to crave the things of the world. Uh, there was no right or wrong. We did what we wanted to do because it felt good. And um, we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Israel had been promised a lot of things by God. They were the apple of his eye. They were given a... Uh, uh, promised uh, the land flowing with milk and honey. They were promised that uh, uh, he would protect them and keep them and, and, and wherever they touched their feet, would uh, he would uh, uh, bless them. We had nothing. Non-Jewish people, we were nothing. And um, there was no promise to us. We didn't have an inheritance like the children of Israel. We weren't to, to be blessed and given land. We were, we were garbage because God came. Uh, he created a people out of no people. And those people were the Israelites, the Jews, the Jews. The Jews, uh, as a matter of fact, they in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers back then, they weren't Jews. There were some, but they weren't Jews. Jews came after uh, Jacob. Okay? Um, he was the father. Well, father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of you, them and so are you. Uh, anyway. The Lord came into his own, and his own received him not. I know that. But his own were the people of Israel. Okay, we didn't have an inheritance. He says, Paul says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. He died and shed his blood and suffered for mankind, for those whom uh, God would call those whom God chose. Thank God he chose us. He died for the sins of the world. Okay? Many are called, but few chosen. Uh, many are called, but few will hear the word of God. Few will answer his call. Um, 
He says, for he himself is our peace, who had made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. We didn't have any peace. Okay, we were off scouring. And, and there was a division between us and the Jews, but we were grafted in. Uh, he came to his own people. They would not receive him. God grafted the non-Jewish people in. We've now received him as our savior. And um, he abolished in his flesh the enmity, that which separates, that, you know, separate us, that law and those commandments. So who are those folks? These uh, black Hebrews. Jesus separated us from that Old Testament stuff. I don't have to keep 613 laws to be saved. All I have to do is accept him like he told me to and, and receive him as my savior and have faith that he died to save my soul. He died to save my soul. It says um, that in that uh, commandments, the law of the commandments and the ordinances were, were cast away because he created in himself one new man from the two. One man from those two, the Jewish and the non-Jewish. One new man. We are we are Christ. We we belong to Christ. We're no longer two separate nations. We're Christians. Christians. Followers of Christ. And and we are not fighting against each other about these laws. Making life difficult. He has done away with the difficulty of trying to keep laws. There are laws of this land that I can barely keep. But thank God I do well with them because of Christ. Okay? Uh, the laws are for the lawless. That's what the Old Testament says. Laws are for the lawless. Um, it says here, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross. He put us together, the Jew and the non-Jew. He put us together in one body through the cross. So he doesn't look at us being Jews and non-Jews. We're not rated according to our nationalities. Okay? We become one person one person Christians and it is for the Christian and that bride of Christ that body of Christ that he is coming back again for that body uh, not the body of Christ that he's coming back again he's coming back for the church the church um He's put to death all of those ordinances. And he came and preached peace to us who were far off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't have to keep 613 laws. Because if I did, I wouldn't make it. I can't perfect myself. Um, in this lifetime, uh, Monica says we will always be works in progress. Okay? And um, we are to accept the humble need of always and only being perfected in Christ. 
humble yourselves. You're being worked on. Your perfection has already uh, been done and um, he's made his abode in you and he which have begun a good work will continue it and uh, you're free to grow. I'm not going to tell you everybody's going to be patient with you. So you're not patient with me, <laughs> but we are to be patient with one another because we're still growing. Um, we're not finished yet. He's still working in us. So uh, we're free to grow in Jesus' love, and he loves us. And Lord knows that takes a load off my shoulder because <sighs> Lord knows I want to be perfect. I want everything clean and spotless. And I want just everything just glorious. But uh, hmm. by the time I finish one thing, there's something else to do. And uh, if I don't uh, if I make it through, maybe I'll finish something, but I won't finish it all. I have a work in progress, and we are works in progress, but he's begun a good work. So keep your eyes on him. Stay focused. Remember the name of Jesus. He did it all. He paid the price. He's the one. Don't get it twisted. You are not finished. You're a work in progress. You're a work in progress. I'm just passing through, leaving a little uh, divine guidance through the word. And um, these are good news. This is good news. I found this little thing here. Uh, one of the uh, kids left it. Has a lot of little scripture on it. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us, even the Jews. He says, but the blood of Jesus Christ uh, has the power to save us. And we have a baptism of repentance, purity of cleansing through the word. We're cleansed by that word. Uh, we grow. Uh, we grow to maturity. And then uh, just last little color, yellow. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. God bless you. God bless you. I love you. I'm going out. And piddle. I love you, everyone, my children, David, Tiffany, uh, Nana, Irma. I love you, Arthur, and Kathy, and Dewana, and Keisha, and um, all my babies. I love you all. God bless you. Gotta go. Just in case.